Good evening, everybody. And welcome to our service of Holy Communion um, for Palm Sunday. Welcome also to those of you joining us later online. Just one notice to give, which is to say, of course, we're going into Holy Week this week. Um, and there is a little card at the back, a flyer, which sort of summarizes all of our different services and events that are happening. I'm hoping that you've all received emails about that. We're very echoey, Steve. Can I, should I go turn down or something? Is that better? Is that better, everybody? Lovely. <laughs> There's a little card at the back that has everything summarised, which is really for you to take to give to friends and neighbours and, and family to invite them also to come along this week to the various things that are happening. You should also have received a palm cross as you came in, and again, there are many spare crosses for you to be able to take to give to friends and neighbours. As is traditional in the Church of England on this day, we'll be hearing both the Palm Gospel, the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, as well as the Passion Reading, the whole story of his arrest and crucifixion. Hearing those two together is a powerful reminder of the roller coaster events of what was to come, has come to be known as Holy Week. As the crowds went from shouting Hosanna to crucify him, in the space of just a few days, so we too are invited to reflect on our response and to ask for strength to continue beside Jesus on the way of the cross. In some churches, there's a tradition of processing with palms, but we've replaced that with a prayer of thanksgiving. Other than that, the service follows the usual format for Holy Communion, but in place of a sermon tonight, we'll hear the entire passion narrative, followed by a short silence and then a reflection. And so we begin with our opening greeting. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We pray together. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able, and we're going to sing together our first hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. The words will come on the screen, or if you prefer to follow in the book, it's number 457. <laughs>
please take a seat. Dear brothers and sisters, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. And so as we hold our palm crosses, I invite you to hold them before you as we say together, God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to hear the Palm Gospel, which is read for us by Isabel, coming by a vid via video. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully, with a loud voice, for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. And so as we hear of the celebration of the crowd, we join in a prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his Light has sprung up for the righteous. And joy for the those Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his and so we stand again to sing the hymn traditional for Palm Sunday, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
please take a seat. We join together in the collect prayer for today. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. So our next Bible reading will be read to us by Mike. The second lesson is from Paul's epistle to the Philippians, chapter 2 and verses 5 to 11. Imitating Christ's humility. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. And so we hear the Passion narrative according to St Luke. Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among you yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater? The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. 
He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was accounted amongst the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come to the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And then about an hour later still, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he'd said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy! Who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. 
Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he'd heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Now he was obliged to release someone for them at the festival. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who'd been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate Wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who'd been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that's called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed have been condemned justly for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds? But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, 
Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid, and then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandments. From glad hosannas to shouts of crucify. From the joy of Palm Sunday to the sorrow of the cross, I have often wondered at the massive shift in people's responses and emotions and what it must have been like to be one of Jesus' followers that week. How would I have reacted? Of course, with hindsight, the shift is not so surprising when we realise the misunderstandings of the crowd, even of the disciples. Their perspective was, was limited. They greeted Jesus as an earthly king rather than as a suffering Messiah. They expected him to rule, to throw out the Romans, not to serve, to conquer, not to die. Even at its best, the love and commitment his followers offered him was flawed, more about what they wanted from him rather than what he came to do. But then I ask myself, isn't that the same of me? The betrayal and crucifixion of Jesus were integral to God's purpose and to the new kingdom Jesus was bringing in. It wasn't some terrible error that God then somehow put right on Easter Sunday. He was the king, victorious. But God's victory is a paradox to us. It turns our world upside down. Over the centuries, the church has used many different analogies and images to try to explain how Jesus' death on the cross brought forgiveness and victory as a sacrifice or as a justification paying the price for sin, building a kind of bridge between us and God, as a ransom, as a victory over Satan and over sin and death, or as a display of God's immeasurable love for us and a kind of wake-up call for just how lost we are that we should end up crucifying God's Son. None of these on their own tell the full story, and the truth, I think, lies in a mixture of all of those. 
The cross is indeed a divine mystery, both in how it works, but perhaps more importantly, in the unfathomable depth of love it displays from God to his undeserving creatures. That's the real mystery. In the face of such great love, the how really becomes irrelevant. And what matters more is, what am I going to do about it? What is my response? And the only answer I can have is to repent and to gratefully receive. In the face of God's great love and righteousness, I have nothing to give and so much to be sorry for. I can only turn to God and gratefully receive his mercy, his forgiveness, his love and his offer of new life. And so we come now to a time of confession. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we come to a time of prayers for our world, Richard is going to lead us. So, so let us turn to prayer. And when I say, through our lives and by our prayers, will you please respond, your kingdom come, through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord God, in Jesus, you came in the body, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. We thank you that you did not remain an idea but walked, wept, and washed feet among us. By your love, change our ideas, especially our religious ideas, into living signs of your work and will. Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord God, in Jesus, you touch those suffering in body and mind. You listened to the ignored, bandaged the broken with love, and you healed them. We remember tonight those whose flesh and bone or mind and spirit are today filled with pain. So name any you wish to name in your hearts. O oh Christ, put your hands where our prayers beckon. Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord God, in Jesus, your body was broken by the cowardly and the powerful. Take on the powerful of the world today, those whose sentences whose word of sentence some to cruelty and those whose silence condones the injustice that they have power to change. Lord, let's remember some situations in our world where that is so true. These sentences to a life of uh, hell and disaster. O Saviour of the poor, 
liberate your people through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord God, by the authority of Scripture, we learn that we are the body of Christ. Even we whose understanding of you is so changeable and you may think we are insignificant. Then, Lord, make us like you, that our souls may be the stained glass through which your light and purpose bring beauty and meaning into the world. Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. As we come to the time when we share in communion, all are welcome to come forward to receive bread dipped in the wine or to come for a blessing um, if you would prefer. Those of you at home may like to have your own bread and wine ready to share with us as a sign of our continued unity. And so I invite you to stand if you're able as we share together in the peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. As the table is prepared and the offering brought forward, we sing together our next song, From Heaven You Came.
The Lord is here. The the Lift up your hearts. We will to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. And now we give you thanks because for our salvation he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory. And where life was lost, there life has been restored. And so we gladly thank you, the saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please take a seat as we continue in prayer. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Please come forward to receive as the steward as Ian directs you. And those of you at home I may like to have your own bread and wine at this point or to say the prayer for spiritual communion, which will come up on the screen. Thank you. 
we join together in the prayer after communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. So thank you for worshipping with us this evening. Do stay and enjoy some refreshments if you would like to afterwards. And just a reminder to pick up the, uh, serv the card about the services and events. And I hope to see you again during the week. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.